We've covered just about every single angle of zombie science that you can hear on this show. Why fast walkers are fast and slow zombies are slow and how a zombie virus might work and how that virus might transmit itself across a country or the entire planet. But I still think there's one piece of the puzzle that we're missing. Why don't zombies die? Yes, I know that zombies are already dead, but I mean, why don't zombies decompose like human corpses regularly do? There has to be some point where walker flesh gets too weak to actually move around, right? They look pretty easy to puncture here, so why aren't they maggot food yet in The Walking Dead? First, let's establish the timeline of deterioration. Oh, oh does anyone have some, does anyone have some pudding? <laughs> Outside conditions can change it, but a human body goes through a pretty regular series of decomposition stages after death. Within seconds of death, your blood stops flowing. With no blood flowing underneath the skin, pallor mortis sets in, and the corpse goes from a general lively looking rosy red to a pale ghastly white. Then a dead body begins to cool during the Algor Morta stage of decomposition. The body will lose a few degrees almost instantly as blood stops flowing and then lose one or two more degrees every hour on the hour as the body becomes the same temperature as its surroundings. After maybe three hours, the familiar rigor morta sets in. Oh God, why did I write it? Ugh. It occurs because the tiny molecular bridges that our muscles use to move around can no longer break and reform due to metabolism. Hmm. Robot. Finally, after 6 to 12 hours, liver mortis sets in and all that blood that stopped flowing gets pooled inside the corpse wherever gravity tells it to. Yeah, kind of, kind of like that. These stages aren't the biggest problem for walkers, aside from the whole skipping rigor mortis thing, it's bacteria. Like the flow of blood, your body's defenses against the organisms that want to turn you back into dirt stop immediately after death. Your cells start to die and rupture, and, and specifically inside of your guts, the microbes start turning chemicals into gas and the tissue is deteriorating, and eventually they blow up and you bloat and it bursts and all those microbes get out everywhere and start decomposing all the surrounding tissue. That's why flesh, dead flesh, looks as gross as it does. And depending on the environmental conditions, not to mention wildlife and insects, decomposition can happen more quickly or more slowly. In a hot, wet Atlanta, however, the setting of The Walking Dead, science gives the walkers maybe one week before they're too decomposed to move, and they are very nearly skeletons. The Walking Dead has covered around a year of time, so again, I ask, why don't the zombies die, Carl? If we're trying to be as scientific as possible, I think a good source for a zombie apocalypse would be a virus. And what if that virus, like World War Z author Max Brooks suggests, could slow down the decomposition process? Then you would have zombies that are walking around our world longer than they otherwise should. That might just be possible. Not only do we share our body with trillions of bacteria, but viruses as well, and a lot of them are floating around our bodies right now, not doing any harm. And for example, a few years ago, researchers found that in our mucus, the, the slimy stuff that lines the insides of our digestive tracts and nose and insides of our eyelids and our mouths, inside that mucus are protective viruses or phages that kill bacteria. If a zombie virus could ramp up the production of those guys, then you would have additional protection against decomposition. And let's, let's admit it, zombies do look pretty slimy most of the time. What, oh, oh God, wait, oh, what, do I have something in my tail? Oh, I don't, it's probably fine. Of course, this mucus would have to be some pretty serious stuff to prevent a dead body from turning back into, well, mush and the zombies would still have to eat to produce this mucus and metabolize and do other, you know, alive stuff. Still, there is a maggot of truth in this corpse of fiction and that's pretty cool. Because science, I'm a zombie, do you under, you get it? Thank you so much for watching. Human bodies decompose in such a regular way that when uh, forensic scientists look at the location uh, of where a person died, they can find chemicals that have seeped out of 
the corpse down into the ground and it, it's sort of like a corpse signature. It, it's, it's a special concoction made by decomposition that leaks into the ground and create, can create kind of a death island in, in its composition, chemical composition that lasts for years. And I have a theory about this and it's, it's kind of sad, but you know when dogs go and lay by, you know, uh, the, the tombs of their owners or the place where their owners died and they, and they stay there for days or weeks or months. Well, dogs have incredibly sensitive noses, can, sell, can, can smell stuff on the cellular level. I think that they can smell these death islands and smells like their former master and that's where they hang out um, because they can still smell them. And it's, it's really sweet and morbid and now you, now you know it.